This time, we'll be driving the legendary Renault 4. With millions built over three decades, this boxy little hatchback was, and remains, the best-selling French-made car in automotive history. Car tester Christophe Bauer tells us the R4 was Renault's model for the masses and their challenge to the VW Bug, Italy's Fiat 500, and Citroën's Du Chevaux. It was practical, robust, and universally affordable, like a pair of blue jeans. Renault's director general at the time had a clear vision for this car for the masses. It had to be robust, so the prototypes were subjected to thorough test drives, covering nearly three million kilometers in total before the model's launch. They were driven through the Sahara, the snows of Minnesota, and the mountain tracks of Sardinia. The project was codenamed Marie Chantal. Postcards arrived at Renault headquarters from all over the world with messages like, Marie Chantal and her children are doing well. Among the endurance tests was one for highway worthiness, an early indication of ambitions for the R4 to become international bestseller. It was the first French car to debut, not at the Paris Motor Show, but at the International Motor Show in Frankfurt in 1961. Christoph Bauer read that the first German reviews were not exactly love at first sight. One German critic wrote that the French had grown sober and functional with their car. All the bare metal with little insulation and casual workmanship did not live up to the Teutonic ideas of quality. The crate rattled and clattered and creaked all over. The R4 may not have been perfect, but it was all-round practical. Adventurers, clowns, and mail carriers. Everyone seemed to love the Renault 4. Its exceptional off-road capabilities and 27-centimeter spring range made the R4 suitable for cross-country treks to places like Mont Saint-Michel. Equipped with four-wheel drive, it even placed third in the Paris-Dakar rally. The Sinpar 4x4 was available as the Fourgenette panel van. As Christoph tells us, when the car first hit the market in the 1960s, rear-wheel drive was still standard. One German reviewer complained that on sudden accelerations, the front-wheel drive knocked the vehicle off course. But with 23 horsepower, he finds the claim very dubious and describes the R4 as French savoir-vivre in metal form and with impressive cornering ability. He says the R4 is a genuine minimalist, with only the essential instruments in an unpadded dashboard. The windows have to be pushed rather than cranked, and instead of handles, the doors have only slots with a bar inside. It's functionality over design. The primary consideration for the exterior was for it to look better and more up-to-date than Citroën's quaint Du Chevaux and more practical than Renault's own Dauphine. The result was surprising surprisingly spacious. The platform frame allowed for a long wheelbase and high chassis, and with the big hatchback and the rear seat bench removed, the R4 was almost a minivan. The Renault 4 was never meant to be a vintage classic. Now it's more of a rolling curiosity. The extra long torsion bar suspension makes the wheelbase five centimeters longer on the right than on the left. The exhaust ends as a side pipe in front of the rear wheel. And to save space, the main muffler is installed inside a front wheel well. The body panels are simply screwed into place, so any car parts dealer can easily replace them. That comes in handy given French drivers' casual approach to parking. 
Kristoff says the R4 stuck with tried and tested drive technology, the same four-cylinder engine that drove the 4CV and the Dauphine. But for the R4, it was mounted in front instead of the rear. And to avoid major redesigns, the transmission was located here in front of the engine. It gained a reputation as long-lasting and very durable. An interesting detail is that the models up to 1975, if the battery ran low, the driver could manually start the car using the crank from the jack. It goes in here. A relic of days long past. The engine capacity grew peu à peu from 747 cubic centimeters and 23 horsepower to 1.1 liters and a proud 34 horsepower. This R4 boasts 26 and a half horsepower and speeds up to 110 kilometers per hour. Christoph sums up the R4 is all the car anyone really needs, though it has its quirks. If it starts raining while the air vents are open, for instance, the occupants might get an unexpected shower. And the handbrake isn't connected to the back wheels, but the front, which could cause some rude surprises. But nobody seems to have complained. The R4 found some 8 million buyers in 31 years in over 100 countries on five continents. That's nothing if not success. Over its long production life, the economy car was regularly upgraded without changing its overall design. A total of four generations had rolled off the assembly line in 1992. Christoph Bauer repeats that the Renault 4 is the most widely sold French car ever. So many people were sorry to see it go after three decades. The very last special models had melancholy names such as Salut, and bye-bye. The R4's uncompromising functionality, its five doors, including the wide hatch, and its low maintenance helped to revolutionize the compact segment. That earns it the status of a milestone in automotive history. The Renault 4's recipe for success was to be small on the outside and big on the inside. Unfortunately, most of its owners took the low maintenance part too far and let their cars rust away. So over the years, most R4s have simply worn out.